I'm the Big Shot Critic. Today, it's Spock's mom versus the world. Little Women was directed by Gillian Armstrong and written by Robin Swicord, from the novel by Louisa May Alcott. It stars Winona Ryder, Susan Sarandon, Claire Danes, Kirsten Dunst, Trini Alvarado, and Christian Bale. The novel was originally published in two volumes, the first in 1868. It's been adapted 56 trillion times into stage productions, movies, miniseries, and even anime. Both the novel and this version take place during the American Civil War. Winona Ryder plays Josephine, or Joe March, the second oldest of the March sisters. They all live with their mother, played to perfection by Susan Sarandon, and they all live in Concord, Massachusetts, while their father is off serving in the war. On the surface, there is a strong temptation to compare this story to Pride and Prejudice. They're both very famous 19th century novels from women authors. They're both about families with four sisters. Both main characters are the second oldest sister, and both main characters share rather defining first wave feminist views. But any serious comparison between these two, I think would be silly for two reasons. One, Pride and Prejudice is a satire of manners and society in 19th century England. It's a send up of Jane Austen's native culture. Little Women is written quite in earnest. Two, Pride and Prejudice can be summarized as a love story between Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. Little Women includes some romance, but is not a love story. In fact, it's tricky to pin down exactly what kind of story Little Women is. It does some very sneaky things. It comes across all simple until someone asks you what the movie was about, and all of a sudden you turn into a politician without a teleprompter. In my Frozen review, I talked about the emotional through line. With the emotional through line comes something called the central question. For example, I said in Doctor Strange, the emotional through line is Stephen Strange's narcissism. The central question then is, will Stephen Strange learn to overcome his narcissism? Most times, the central question is a very conscious thing. Will Frodo and his friends be able to destroy the ring? Will James Bond be able to stop the bad guy and save the world? Will David ever get to the point? <sighs> I think I'm way funnier than I actually am. In some movies, they play this bait-and-switch game with the central question. I don't want to give any specific examples to avoid spoilers, but these are movies where the protagonist goes off in search of one thing and then achieves it, usually about two-thirds into the movie, only to realize that's not what they really wanted or needed. Little Women is the third kind, much more rare and much harder to pull off. These are movies where the central question is never revealed to the conscious mind. On a plot level, there is no single obstacle or antagonist to be overcome. The characters deal with one problem, and then another, and another, and so on. So what is Little Women about? What's the central question? I think it's, will the March sisters' dreams come true? Can they succeed and thrive in their 19th century world, or will they be defeated by it? Their world sends them all sorts of heaters and curveballs, and one by one, they deal with them. One by one, they learn from them. One by one, they grow closer together because of them. I think this canvas of individual conviction and family bond is what Louisa May Alcott originally intended to give to her readers. I think it's also what Gillian Armstrong intended to translate to her audience. And top marks for both. Given the themes and structure of Little Women, I'd say it's easier compared to The Sandlot. It's basically The Sandlot for girls. Thomas Newman wrote the score for Little Women, and apparently this was before he forgot what a melody is. 
The main cast of Little Women is incredible. I've thought a lot about how to convey to you how good they were, and I really couldn't think of anything. There is one scene between Winona Ryder and Claire Danes that honestly almost makes me weep just thinking about it. And I watched this movie, like, more than a week ago. The character of Amy March is played by Kirsten Dunst and Samantha Mathis. My only complaint about Little Women is that Samantha Mathis can't really keep up with Kirsten Dunst. Guys and girls, I give Little Women nine out of ten commandments. It kept the fourth one. Thou shalt keep the audience engaged. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And click the bell icon so you know when my Star Trek The Motion Picture review arrives. Buckle up, because January's got a lot of Gene versus George.